Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Yep, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Uh, it's just me. Envy's in Detroit. Angeli had to run and go do something, but one of my favorite people to talk to is here, my man Gerard Carmichael. I like this a lot, though. You like the intimacy? It's very Frost Nixon. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, it's yes. like, okay, well, let's get a little serious. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. This is the one I'm going to cry. You think so? <laughs> Probably. Have you ever thought about that? Like, you know what? Certain interviews, I know I'm going to shed tears. Like, if I ever say, I thought about that. If I sit down with Oprah, yeah. I'm going to cry. And I, I already got the story that I'm going to tell her to cry. Oh, you? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Well, I guess I can't ask what the story is. Yeah. You got, you've I got to tell it for story, Oprah. You're waiting for Oprah? Yep. Yeah, I think about crying a lot. I, I don't cry a lot ever. I cry, I haven't cried. I cried twice. I cried last night, actually. Why? Uh, it was just like a friend. Like a friend was going through something. It was weird. I, I'd never actually experienced that before. Really? Yeah, a friend was going through something, and it made me cry. You never experienced what? Empathy? <laughs> no, not on not on that level. I yeah. usually just deal with things and like go whatever, and I was like, oh, shit, I'm like really crying. <laughs> like, so what's, the, what's the other thing that made you cry? Uh, it was... Uh, the Charleston shootings, Ooh. but it was specifically the forgiveness uh, of the family. I remember hearing the um, the court hearing uh, where like the shooter was there, mm -hmm. and like the families came up and they were just so like they were like, "What you did was wrong, and I forgive you." And and, and I know those people, right? Like the Wednesday night prayer meeting, Absolutely. like people. You from, you from are, North Carolina? I'm from yeah, South Carolina, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I went every week, so like. Mm -hmm. That one really, I, I was like depressed for like a week. That, that one really got me because I knew, I felt like I knew the intention of those people. Like yeah. they get off work at like six and then rush to church by seven. And like it, for them to get killed doing that was so devastating. Cause like, uh, but then when the family forgave the guy and was standing to, uh, I don't know, the religion that they held on to from the beginning and like, holding up kind of those principles and tenets and like something pure about that. Mm -hmm. And that's an impossible thing to do. And they just did it kind of one by one. And it was this beautiful thing, watching them still connect with God in that yeah. moment. Don't watch the Emmanuel documentary then. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. It's, I haven't it, seen it they, yet. They, that's, it's, that, that's a very pivotal part of the movie where they show that exact scene with all these families forgiving Dylan Roof, but then they got one of the brothers on there is like, fuck that. He killed my mom. I'm never forgiven. Yeah, I, of course. Yeah, I, I haven't gotten to that level of forgiveness yet. I don't think I have that in me. Do you have any open, like, enemies, any open grudges, yes. any open? I, I have I have two people that I absolutely despise on this planet. One is Wendy Williams' husband, Calvin Hunter. Yeah. And I the thing with me is, like, people say, oh, you got to forgive because you're it's better for you. You're holding on to something negative. And I like, I don't feel that way. When I say fuck yeah. you, it's fuck you. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. But do you? How much time does it occupy? Like, how much of your energy does it occupy? Like, when you during the day, is it just when he comes up, or is it just like, when he comes up? Yeah, exactly. Just when he comes up here on the radio, and mm -hmm. it's and, and it's a, it's a lot of performance. He comes up that. a lot. I know who this nigga is for whatever <laughs> reason, and I shouldn't. Yeah. It's a lot, of, <laughs> but it's a lot of performance that goes into it too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's not like I really, I really care. But you know, somebody told me about forgiveness. They say you forgive someone when you, um, when you have uh, realized you're not going to do anything to them. Meaning, mm. like if you get a shot at revenge, yeah, you're not going to do anything to them. Or if you get a sh a chance to and hurt them, in you some don't way, feel that way yet. No, I don't, I don't you wanna, feel like I don't still hurt him either, though. Bernie Mac on site shit. Nah, oh, okay. nah, nah. I think life is kicking his ass yeah. enough. So yeah. how come you can't let go then? If life is already doing that, I, it's not that I can't let go. I just don't give a fuck. Yeah. Like, I don't hate him. It's just like, fuck him. Like, fine. But fuck him. Not when you cut your toenails and you just throw him away. I'm not thinking about my toenails but anymore. But that is with, but that is with animosity. That's not without animosity to say mm. that. To say, I don't care, but fuck him is still a strong, that's still a yeah. direction to send your emotion in. It's not like you're like, I, I've truly let it go. I could be at a party and he's across the room and I'm fine. It's not yeah. like you're saying that. There's still something. And I'm just saying that's like, I, I, I go through that and I have to deal with that and my phone is never on my bad um a lot and it, I don't know it's it's hard it occupies a lot of space if you hold on to any you know that you got people that you don't fuck with dry I can't see that with you I have like I have like like random like kind of clouds uh over certain situations like like for instance like 
me and my dad are going through a thing, like kind of a clash where, you know, uh, you know, I have this weird expectation of him not to be a uh, fucking liar. And uh, <laughs> and he's having trouble <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> living up to that expectation, and I'm sure I'm having trouble living up to his. I mean, an interesting dynamic. I saw uh, I saw you with Dr. Jessica Clemens the other day at the Be Well conversation, but then I, I watched her. um I don't, I don't I was I started to call it home videos. That's this isn't home videos though. The thing with your father and your uncles and all. yeah yeah this, is it home videos? This what? one sermon on the mount. Sermon on yeah, the mount. Yeah. yeah, I watched that yesterday, and I thought that was such an interesting dynamic because I think all men get to that point where we're like afraid of our fathers. And oh, I, I yeah. don't think that ever goes away. Oh yeah. But then there comes a point where you're a man and you gotta stand up to your pops and say exactly what you have been feeling all of these years. Oh it's hard like I uh you saw both like when I talk with my mom there's a certain peace mm -hmm. and I'm like when my dad just, I look like Ray Charles, like it's like, <laughs> real like weight. I'm like fidgety and like I can't, and I'm a kind of fidgety person, but like I'm very all over the place uh, with him because it is a hard thing. Like the dad has, a, there's a weird dynamic, you know, like there's a weird dynamic, a weird power that, you know, a father can't have over a son. It's fair. Um, yeah, yeah. And that's the first man that you looked up to that you wanted to be just like, like your first idol, your first icon, but then you realize, like, my icon was wrong. Oh, <laughs> when you realize your dad is just a nigga, a nigga. that got somebody <laughs> pregnant <laughs> and your mom was yes. this girl that was just yeah. doing the best she got there yeah. could, <laughs> and, like, they are human and you're very flawed and, you know, it's a hard thing, but you have to accept that. With me and my dad, it's weird because there's a dynamic shift. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to be honest, I just I you're the provider. Provider, yeah. I, I feel like dad dad should mean whoever paid for the last vacation. <laughs> I'm dad, <laughs> the father of. I but yeah. <laughs> that dynamic shift. It's it's hard. Like you know, not to sound. We like both my parents are like on payroll. That's a weird dynamic shift to like live in. You put your father on payroll too? Yeah. For what? I can understand mom because that's mom. She you know. Yeah, yeah. And in the pop. same house too. It is just like even still to, yeah. to give like give a sense of like this is your own my money. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you have some and you yeah. have some of. <laughs> no, it's so interesting, yeah. man. When I hear you talk about your pops, or even when I see you and your pops talking, I understand that energy because I've been through it. Like when you talk about confronting your father over his infidelity, yeah. Like I did. I mean, I, I wasn't. You, you could tell your own. No, story, but, but you, yeah. but you went through the same. That, same it's, exact it's thing. It's crazy how specific that is. Like when I talk to friends and stuff, how people go through that. People live in like a, a lot of this, like the home videos and this thing, uh, uh, part two. I, Forget what sermon on, sermon on yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my own thing uh, is about freedom, and it's that freedom to express this freedom to not carry thing, carry these weights of like, you know, unspoken, <laughs> mm -hmm. unspoken conversations you should have had. Uh, carry the weight of like secrets, like being an adult with secrets is gross. That's so <laughs> gross. Yeah, you know what I, I mean? And like having that with your dad, like it's very easy to have that with your dad. And it's so specific with, like, other kids and outside marriages where, like, you know, families I knew, like, they usually found out at the funeral. <laughs> you know, it was like a funeral yeah. and, like, and then you look and you see your new brothers and sisters and shit. And I didn't want to be one of those funeral new family discovery people. But it happens a lot. You, like, when did you confront your dad? I first confronted my father like way back in the day. This had to be like 20 years ago. And you know, and this is when I first found out because you know, the woman who's now his wife, they lived in, we all lived in the same town. Monk's Corner is a small ass town. So mm -hmm. he used to always be over there. You know, who is that? Yeah. Oh, that's my secretary. That's my assistant. Dumb shit. Like stupid ass lie yeah. that you can't believe somebody would actually believe. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's like when I confronted him, he looked me in my face and said, Oh, you only got one girlfriend? He was like, One day you gonna understand. So you don't understand how God that fucks damn. me up as a man. God damn, you're dead. <laughs> so <laughs> <cheap>. <laughs> oh fuck, that seems like a deleted scene from the Five Heartbeats. <laughs> then I go on to a life of infidelity yeah, like, because God of that damn, moment. Yeah, <laughs> man, was he making an infidel <laughs> infidelity superhero? <laughs> well, how'd you confront your pops? Um, I was, <laughs> I got drunk in London and called him. 
You, you, know? you needed that liquid courage. Yeah, a little yeah. bit. I, I drank some, uh, wh- and I'm never afraid of anything. <laughs> and that was really scary to just like, mostly because I felt like I could have undone my parents' marriage. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of, I, I found out that my dad um, had other kids and, and was who he is uh, since I was like nine or 10, somewhere around there. So I kind of carried that like my entire childhood and you mm-hmm. feel this sense of obligation to your mom you want to protect her exactly you don't want her to be hurt in any way and you you think that by carrying this you know by being your dad's wingman on this that somehow you're the glue that keeps the family together mm-hmm. right and then uh because all you know is like the media version of uh infidelity right oh he cheats she leaves it's over you know yeah. two christmases type of shit and and the truth is like you know, I got drunk. I told him. My mom found out. And it was this uh, weird immediate forgiveness that she had. I say weird because it's, uh, I, I don't know if I expected that. I don't know. I, I knew she was like this Christian Southern Baptist lady who like held on to her beliefs. But I didn't think she would like immediately forgive him. And she did. And it's weird because I, I try to accept that but i also wanted to be mad mm. i wanted to be angry you know and she's this really sweet lady and very kind and i and her her sweetness angers me now you know because i don't feel like she's protecting herself and i don't feel like she's like guarding against herself against like you know people lying it. to her against the like kind of cold cruel world sort of thing i mm-hmm. just don't want her to be like too vulnerable and susceptible to those types of things. I'm going on a long tangent. Yeah, I'm but, listening because I, I under, like I said, I understand every emotion that you're talking about, and I'm glad that you got it out early because for me, over the past year or so, like I had like like therapy really made me hate my pops, mm. and I thought I loved my pops. I do love my pops, but yeah. when you're in there and you're talking about all of the things that impacted you when you were young that you never spoke about, you just suppressed, you suppressed, you suppressed. Yeah, let mom and dad go through their thing. But then as you're older, and like you talk about even something as small as a vacation. I take my me and my mom get a passport. We go we yeah. leave the country and stuff. You would love to do that with your pops, but pops is with the woman that he left your mom for. Yeah. yeah. So I I gotta choose sides. Like I'm not taking you and your wife anywhere. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. That's, that that's frustrating. Yeah, the loyalty that you feel. I mean, especially moms win one. That moms always win. Always. hundred percent. Like, hundred percent wins. And like that loyalty that you feel can disrupt your relationship with them. Yeah, it man. It's very, very disruptive, you know, because you should be able to accept pops and new girl and whatever, but it's hard because it's like, if, <sighs> and Tough. it depends on if your mom accepts it. it it's so many late, and it, all that shit's just a burden that people just, you know, carry, trying to smoke some weed. Yeah, I, I, I told my wife, I told my therapist, and I told my mom one thing that, I was, that was bothering me so much about my pops, and it was the fact that he was treating his other grandkids, his, like his his wife's grandkids, like his own, but doesn't acknowledge his biological mm. grandkids. Mm. And that shit bothered me for months. Yeah. And like, you know, it was one little thing. He asked me for, he asked me to do something for him. I'm yeah. like, I'm not doing that shit. As a punishment for you, yeah. not acknowledging your yeah. real grandkids. And I didn't tell him that. Yeah. But then I eventually told him and that shit did feel like a weight came off. You know what I mean? And what fucks you up as a son is when your father says to you, you're right. Hmm. Yeah. That's what fucks you up. Yeah. Well, dads carry shit too. They like they know, but yeah, dads yeah, yeah. will just sit. It's always like come to me. Dads love that position of power and just like sit in the, you know, and even if even my friends who don't know their dad or know of their dad and like know where he is and you would think and the dad knows of them and you would think the dad would be inclined to come visit, come see him, come talk to him, apologize. Mm-hmm. But even in that position, they still wait, you know, and still wait. Even if they know, I don't know if they feel it or not, even if they know they're wrong, they just wait. Yeah, it's interesting even watching the the home videos and the Sermon on the Mount because, you know, I, re- I read this article that uh, TV AV Club said, and they said that Gerard doesn't know what to do with black women. I and, hate and, her. And they <laughs> That's the one. You asked if there was one. There was one. There's... Look, she doesn't mean any harm, but she's an idiot. She Who, your mom like, or the person that wrote the article? The person that wrote that. Oh, it, it, okay. fr- it frustrated me for two reasons. One, I didn't send it out to press for a reason. It's very, okay. very personal to me. Got you. I, it's the most personal thing you could possibly do. It's my family. you yeah. know. It's, and I, it, 
that specifically wasn't meant for reviews. It wasn't meant for press. I didn't come here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. you know, like we talk a lot and like I would have been here a lot like of trying to tell it was on. Most people don't know it was on. Yeah. I think like 15 people watched it and loved it. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I love you. The 15 that watched it and loved it, I yeah. love you. But she completely, one, she, one, she's a comedian. I right. didn't even know who or wrote it. I just thought I'm, it. I should put the air quotes up. Okay. And someone who, I, I think that's a conflict of interest, someone who is engaged in the thing that you do, uh, reviewing the thing that you do. I get you know, it. like yeah. that's like Cardi's album being reviewed by Nicki. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and I'm giving her way too much credit in that analogy, but still, like, it, yeah. it's very. Um, it, it was frustrating. I let it go. I saw it, though. It was like, it was annoying because I didn't send it to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One, yeah. like, this isn't yours. And two, you are, I think, wrong. I th you know, I reject her hypothesis. Yeah, she's, they, they said you, uh, she said you didn't know how to engage the women around you and you had incredibly family. leading questions. It's my family. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? This yeah. is These are my friends. This is my you family. You know this what is my to niece. ask them. Yeah, this is my and and the questions. Honestly, the questions were simple because I work backward from like time capsule type things, mm -hmm. right? And it's a really specific target that I set for all of my work. And I asked those questions because those are things that I felt were timeless. They those were things that I felt were, if I watch this in forty years, I'll I'll want to know that. I want to know my niece's perspective on the meaning of life. I'll want to know those things, and I want to. You know, I'll want to connect with these really meaningful things. The the meaningful things are always kind of cliche, kind of simple. So that's why, you know, those questions are there. But even to feel like I should explain myself to that is very silly. Yeah, I didn't, when I watched it, I didn't get that. I got, I, I, I honestly, when I first started, I said, oh, it's dope because Gerard is making a space for black women to be heard. Because that's always, you know, what black women say, oh, we don't. Nobody makes spaces for us to be heard. I nobody want to give a to specific us. thing to give them the freedom to express themselves without feeling exploited, or without feeling, uh, you know, vulnerable to any type. Of, I could be there to protect them. This mm -hmm. is mine. This is my production. I'm directing. I've made this thing, and I know you, and your thoughts are safe here. Mm -hmm. And I'm always trying to protect perspective. You know, I. You know me. I mean, that's the shit I really lean into. I mm -hmm. like like those clashes. I like when people have interesting, like weird thoughts that they're kind of afraid to share. I want them to share it. I want them to feel comfortable to share it. And so that's why that was made the way it was. Like me and the girls in the kitchen were just that us talking and like them sharing really, really intimate thoughts. They were all afraid. Like later, they're like, "Am I gonna get fired?" They all called me. They're like, "Is this okay?" Like that's yeah, yeah. how vulnerable they felt, and I. Love that they were comfortable enough to do that and be that with me. Yeah, even uh, the New York Times was like, they don't feel like you got, you're getting personal, but not personal enough. And I'm like, what more do they want? I know, like an x-ray. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Did, did it hurt to do this, though? Like to do the home video thing? No, it felt great. Okay. It, in every respect, I, it felt really, really great. Um, I, and I'm really thankful to every woman in it that let me do it. Like, and let me just hear them and capture it. I really enjoyed, uh, I don't know, that was, your, was that your sister at the end of Sermon on the Mount when she was just yeah. talking about why men shouldn't cheat? Yeah. And how, how, how it does fuck up the family. And I'm listening to her like, I'm sitting back like, preach. But yeah. this is, you know, I'm a no, reformed cheater, so I understand who everything she's saying. Black men don't cheat. Yeah, it's not, not, yeah we don't. But, reformed, <laughs> yes. Watch this Sunday. I, I know one, just my dad. But my dad... <laughs> My dad's R. Kelly, and you gotta. Like, Jesus Christ! <laughs> he said that on there, and you correct him. Oh yeah, my dad's R. Kelly. Some a lot of people's dads are R. Kelly. You, you might, might have not want to explain that. It, just put admit it, it, but it, you don't have to. It's not in the literal sense, but in the emotional sense. Yeah, dads can be R. Kelly sometimes. No, you have to explain yeah. that. There's what we think of R. Kelly. We think of a freaking pedophile who pees on little girls. Yeah, I don't, that's yeah, not your yeah, father. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, how do you think having four children? Not my mom <laughs> during the marriage feels. Yeah. It feels like, you know, you got feels like on. some pee happened. <laughs> <laughs> Something got pissed on. I don't know what the yeah, fuck got pissed I, on. I get it. My heart got pissed on. I this got nigga you. peed on my heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, R. Yeah. Kelly. 
makes perfect sense. Now that makes perfect my sense. My dad's R. Kelly because he peed on my heart. There That's you the go. name of <laughs> my on your, memoir. On your underage heart. <laughs> no, my underage heart, yeah. Yeah, he peed on an underage heart. That's fucked up. <laughs> what made you want to do this whole concept called home videos, though? Uh, just the thought of capturing it's what that was, what what kind of, uh, what Sermon on the Mount kind of became was this exploration of my mom's contentment. It, it Ooh. They're kind of opposites, you know what I mean? Like this, the first one was, I, I think, really sweet, um, and it and it really was kind of home videos is why it's named that. Um, it, it, there's no real narrative in it. It's just interviews. It's um, uh, very simple and, and, and a very kind piece. This one is, it, it was rough for me, you know, like I've heard a lot of things kind of for the first time while we were filming. Uh, I kind of started questioning things, religion as I knew it. Mm. I, I've really been in that space. And I've kind of always felt that way. I've always felt a little distant from the Christianity I was taught. It, it never felt like the full dynamic range of it. It always felt limiting. It, I, I always, it is limiting. It, well, it felt like God was this mean guy with a beard and lightning rods that's ready to punish you for every whatever thing. Well, that's and, actually the white man with a beard and a whip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. as D.L. Hughley said, the same person that gave us nigga gave us yeah, but religion. It, but it's also us. It's also us. Then we ha that guy only exists in your subconscious. It only exists in your spirit. And then you punish you. Mm. You know, like yeah. like you really hurt yourself. And it's like uh, the Christianity I was taught didn't allow for like kind of ownership over yourself and a, a certain empowerment that I think is true in the true version of Christianity and Christ's true teachings. But anyway, this piece made me explore that and question what my mom is being taught or was being taught or has been taught for 60 years. It, it made me question like the structure of that. It made me question that as a place of refuge. It made me question that as a, a place to derive philosophy from. It, 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 it's What were you at, questioning exactly? Well, and the, the minister that's in it is... Uh, close friend of the family's like and, mm -hmm. and I love him I, I I really do but then you heard him speak and he speak to my mom and I thought I was just going in to like get a prayer I honestly didn't know it was going to go in the direction that it went mm -hmm. like I, I thought it was going to be kind of a sweeter moment to end the piece and he started sounding like my dad's wingman exactly you know what I mean? And Yo, it started sounding like... Well, I didn't realize that was a reverend until you said it just now. I thought that was your dad's home boy. Like, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. He's a reverend. And, wow. and this is where my mom goes for counseling. Wow. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, And a lot of people lean on religion to provide the counseling that they still need. You know, and that it may... The religion that they have, the structure that they have may not provide it in the way that they need it. And you got to be all right with questioning that. You can have God and therapy. You can have God and philosophy. You can have God and honest thoughts and feelings. Like you can have both. That's what my sister gets at. Like mm -hmm. my my sister's really strong. I really think she's a genius. I was very thankful she came in. Uh, she kind of felt like this externalized version of my mom's self conscious. Like she felt like, you know, the angel on her shoulder that you really want and need and and i'm really thankful for her because she speaks from power and i think we view religion the same way like we view it as a really powerful thing mm -hmm. um that shouldn't even be and, questioned yeah but, but you have to question it and, and i know that sounds obvious it sounds obvious that religion should be a powerful thing but it, it really is this inhibiting box that you'll in the like that's what it is like you can see my mom being put in this box when you watch it like this box where the parameters are forgiveness without thought or logic and I don't believe God defies logic. Nah, because I mean if you look at the Bible and it, it's certain things I question in the Bible now like when he says uh, earthly masters should respect their slave masters or no earthly earthly slaves should respect their slave masters. Mm -hmm. It's like who was that for? Mm -hmm. uh, when it says you know being gay is an abomination why would God be homophobic? Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. even when it says things about you know Jewish people are the, their father is the devil. Like, huh? Why would you, God be anti-Semitic? Like, you have to, with, with the Bible, the hard thing is to, one, not accept it as literal, accept it as parables, expect, accept it as principles that mm -hmm. you should 
derive from whatever structure the story provides, but not accepting it as just this literal thing, right? And, and the Bible still as dynamic, actually more dynamic. Also, you have to account for time, and the Bible has a lot of law of time and things that were necessary of the time or were customary for the time, and yes. that's in there. It's not like there are revisions or updates. I mean, there are, but yeah, usually the, crooked ministers that do it. Yeah, it's bullshit. Like, yeah. the, 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 why, is there, why is there a new version of the Bible? So who's writing it? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, they got the, the LeBron James version of the Bible, the King James version. Yeah. It's like, it's like, it's like <laughs> LeBron. It's like, not yet. That, that would be master market. It's coming. That would be master branding. Dear it's God, coming. where's Maverick? <laughs> <laughs> it's only a matter of time. Oh, It's coming. But yeah, it, it's, you have to accept, so when you hear things, slaves being, you know, true to their earthly masters, you got to accept that as a principle. Like there's a principle there to extract from that, not in the literal sense, but the principle of like, is this an earthly master? Is like, mm. am I a slave to this? Is this dynamic that of slavery? Like, do I need to free myself from other? Er there are plenty of earthly masters that you have mm. to extract. The, the principle is usually correct. The story may not uh, apply mm. anymore, but the principle is usually correct, so and I that's what you have to. So extract, at what point? I do, think. At what point do you rebel? Because a lot of the, a lot of that a lot of that that rhetoric was used on slaves. So they did not rebel. So they stayed in that box. So there was some type of order. So even when you talk about your smartphones, at what point do we rebel from all of that? that yeah. That? Well, and yeah, like, you know, an actual slavery is just like, uh, you know, they weren't they didn't have access to the ability to, <laughs> you know what I mean, to yeah. even form those things. It was, you know, physical and institutional. But like for us in our personal lives, <sighs> I, I mean, you have to kind of rebel immediately. Like, you see a problem, I think you like you check it. You you have to check that shit like fast. I, I feel like your sister's a rebel. Yeah, and I wonder was she always like that, or was was that over time? It was. I've always known her as that. Okay. She was always someone who. Uh, she was the first person I ever met that <laughs> that I saw send something back at a restaurant. I, I didn't see that. I'd never seen that before. I didn't know you had the power to do that. I was a kid. Really? She met my brother when I was like in first grade. Like mm -hmm. they've been together forever. It's my brother's birthday, by the way. I should say happy birthday to brother-in-law. You mean? I yeah, call her my, real brother. Yeah. We they've been together so long. I call her my sister. First grade. That's my that's my sister-in-law. My brother's like nine years older than me, but like uh, I call her my sister. Okay. <laughs> and it's weird. Yeah, I have to. Explain. It's my brother. That's my actual brother, and she's my sister-in-law. But I, I got you. Yeah, refer to her. But she's always been that. I I, <laughs> I didn't I didn't want to be in that moment because she's just, I think she's like this emotional like genius and mm -hmm. in the sense that she's not afraid to speak up when there's a problem and she's not afraid like she's not afraid to be informed enough to like articulate how she feels, you know, and and she's always been that. And I I'm I'm so thankful for her. She's really like molded me into who I think I am. Yeah, the contrast between her and the Reverend is great. Cause when you're hearing the Reverend, you're like, all right, who are you talking about? God or yourself? Yeah. You're basically telling your mom forgiveness and yada, yada, yada. And then your sister's like, no, you cheat. Yeah. It's fucked up. Yeah. You know, you, you know the consequences of your actions. I'm like, she's right. Yeah, it's crazy. She's calling out a Reverend on the lawn of his church. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah. at home and she's just like, and, you have to do that. You have to question. You have to question religion as you know it. You can't, I mean, you can, but don't be a Christian because your mom's a Christian. Be one because you connect with the principles of it. Mm -hmm. You know, Absolutely. learn what those principles are. And the only way to learn is by questioning. That's, that's the, that's always been kind of my fight. That's the only way I've found growth or found understanding is through questioning everything. You know, it's how I found out my dad's cheating. It's how I yeah. found out the version of Christianity that works for me. <laughs> you know, it's how it, it question everything. It gives me a... Um, Pick the tires. It gives me a feeling of strength because I do question everything except for what happens in my family. Yeah. Meaning like, you know, and I, and I realized that when I was writing my first book because I was like, it was, it was things I didn't know about my mother and mm. my father. And mm. it's things that, you know, I see you ask your mom about. It. I'm like, damn, I would, I would, I want to ask my mom, has she been with anybody since? You know, her and my father got divorced. They've been, yeah. they've been apart 20 years. Yeah. And that's the other thing that makes me upset. If she had moved on with somebody else, I probably wouldn't still be angry with my father. Yeah, because then it, it 
you feel weird because you're like, wait, he hurt her and she's damaged beyond repair. She's never changed since she can't love again. And that's devastating to yeah. feel that way. Cause that's the implication, right? That like, oh, she's alone and here he is off doing it again and happy. And she has to live in like Absolutely. the defeat of like a, a marriage that didn't work. And she doesn't ha like the thing to question are the principles or what she's adhering to or what's blocking her from experiencing freedom. You know what I mean? Yeah, and maybe yeah, there yeah. isn't, I don't want to speak, I don't know your mom, but you know, like, I don't want to like speak for her, mm -hmm. but is there, what is the reason? Why is she alone? Does she feel like it's wrong to marry again? Does she yeah. feel like, like what's stopping her? What's stopping her from having the freedom? That's what I, I'm always trying to have for my mom. I always wanted to like, just see the world, like experience things, experience, poke, at things, question everything. And see, I don't Even know. Even if you live with him. And I don't know because I've never <laughs> asked those questions. Ask it. Yeah, yeah. Ask it. You... That's why I like what you're doing because it's, 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 it's not just showing your family dynamic. It's showing family dynamics in general. Is that what you was going for? That's kind of the... It's specific. It's as specific as I could be. Um, and I think that's where you relate to more people mm -hmm. in specificity. And, like, that's... I, like I'm saying, like you dealt with that with your dad as well. Like it just happens to be a lot of families, yeah. like a lot of families I know and definitely my own. And it just, it felt weird being inhibited in any way. It, it just doesn't feel right. And like, I wanted my family to experience freedom. And my mom, you know, after doing it, talked about how light she felt, you know, it, which implied a burden that I didn't know was there. And that's what made me explore more and do another piece. And so that's why Sermon on the Mount came. Was there anything that you learned that, like, shifted the dynamics of your family forever? Um, Yeah. Yeah, it's some things that, like, it, uh, for the good, for some things. Like, mm -hmm. my, my parents started doing therapy. That's beautiful. Yeah, they started doing therapy, like they did couples therapy. And, wow. And, and and my dad, I'm trying to get them to go separately, you know. And, uh, you know how hard it is to, to get two old people from North Carolina to go to therapy? Oh, it's very impossible. <laughs> it's almost like they got to be on payroll to get them to go. Well, yeah. <laughs> they are. No, they, they, they fought it for, I've been wanting it for years. Yeah. I, I really wanted it for years, and they fought it. And, you know, I mean, they do what they want, but they finally came to a place where I, I think seeing it, like, seeing home videos and seeing yourself projected on something allows you to then reflect in a different way. And so they became more open to it. Maybe it was that, maybe it was something else. Uh, and uh, it, it, that's good. That's really, really good. I like my dad better while he's in therapy. You know, like I, I, I think that he's a little bit more open and, mm. you know, hopefully it'll continue to grow and they'll be okay. I just want my mom to be, truly happy and i want my dad to be free from he's really in a kind of mental cage right now my father went to therapy two and three times a week he was on 10 to 12 different medications he tried to kill himself like 30 years ago so that's mm -hmm. what that's what you know prompted him to go do all of that kind of mm -hmm. stuff and he's been getting a check for his mental health issues for the past 20 years because none of the medications and stuff work and he didn't tell me that until thanksgiving of 2018. god damn <laughs> yes <laughs> wow so so wow so, so, he's been getting a check for 20 years for 20 plus years for, like wow but, which is also a weird supplement for it i guess it's just like well we can't fix you let's throw some money throw at some it. money at you yeah, the yeah. american way yeah, baby. Fix. Yeah. yeah oh man that's um and what what caused him not to tell you like what was the wall you think um i think it's the same thing that all men have you know they teach us that we got to be tough they got they teach us that we got to be hard we can't show any weakness you know we we can't be vulnerable oh man people are in so many boxes bro mm -hmm. <laughs> guys especially black guys are in Absolutely. so many like boxes i know niggas scared to try on different jeans <laughs> uh, you really want to do the fucking new york motorcycle denim all like, all yet still my nigga Take the hat off. Take the Yankee fit off sometime. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't have to wear Tim's all summer, bro. <laughs> yeah, what are you bro? doing, bro? Try some like, slides. Try some color, my nigga. <laughs> try some fucking color. Purple exists. Oh. That shit is gorgeous. But that's because... Know your undertone. <laughs> Fuck you doing? That's because that's what... Yo, do you realize that as black people, especially black men, we're always just trying to feel secure? Yeah, always. So whatever makes us feel comfortable and secure is what we... 
tend to gravitate towards. Yeah, and that's a lot of insecurity. Yeah. That's what's holding off. Yeah. You know, the lack of freedom because it's a lot of expectations. It's of who you're supposed to be, what you're supposed to be like, and, you know. I, I mean, you know, like, I, I grew up the weird nigga in the hood, so, like, you know, like, that's a weird kind of the guy that's, like, on computers and writing poetry and shit. Like, that's the, the guy that's not living up to the standard of what that's supposed to be. Yet yeah. these are my... It doesn't mean you don't relate to people just because you are different. And that's a simple principle, but a hard one to accept that, like, just because you aren't the exact same as even your group of friends, it actually adds to that, allows you guys to grow in different directions, allows you guys to stay grounded and balanced and, you know, be yourself. Like, people are really afraid to be themselves. But did you have the room to be that or was your father constantly comparing you to, like, your cousins like mine was? Oh, my dad was out cheating. He was out fucking or something. <laughs> so was my was father, like, but yeah, when he yeah. when he had time, he was actually really nice when he was there. So yeah. he was he was very. It, it, that's what made it hard. He was delightful to be around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the yeah, real yeah, fun yeah. guy. I still got yeah. excited when the car pulled into the driveway. I was like, "Daddy!" Me too. And then, like, in my room, fucking hurt. Yeah. <laughs> but it was. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I. Uh, I forgot the question. Wait. wait. I oh, no, I was just saying, did you have the room to be yourself? Or was he trying to make you something No, else? no, no. It wasn't It, it wasn't really that. You know, I, I, I've i always kind of even put them on camera. I've been like, it's actually the truest dynamic of just me behind the camera pointing it at my family and, like, just capturing things. Mm -hmm. That's kind of, since I was a kid, I've always, we had the big camcorder and then the three, the small three CCD shit. And then the, I've had all of them. And I always love capturing moments with my family so it, it, yeah it felt really i mean it's it's, it's kind of shocking to see you even do that because you don't have social media so you're kind of like a reserved person in a lot of ways you're not like super transparent unless you're on stage or something like that so you know why why give them the behind the scenes like well that? i i don't i i personally don't like to ask for attention unless i think it deserves your attention mm -hmm. you know what i mean like that's on the thing and if i'm not really thinking about social media i shouldn't be it Why, like don't join the game and not play it <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah. that's really weird so uh and it's not that i'm like necessarily reserved i'm just not on there you know and i know like kind of now it seems like you don't <laughs> it just doesn't exist but i enjoy that i enjoy like the, the peace that comes with that mm -hmm. uh but i still i thought it was interesting and i thought it was it's been something i wanted to explore and cameras are like microscopes and i wanted to put you know, this family dynamic, my mom's, you know, contentment, religion, these things under a microscope because it did mold me. It, I am it. I am everyone in there, mm -hmm. you know, and so it's kind of self-reflective in a way, too. I, I just wanted to see me. It kind of became that. I didn't know what it was going to be. I just brought a camera to North Carolina and I have a, you know, great relationship with HBO and we just we had a great outlet for it, but it's very specific oversharing. Not not yeah you know, the type of oversharing that just happens on Twitter. You just like here, look what I ate for breakfast. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? yeah. I wasn't just trying to put out drama. I was trying to put out like just an interesting portion of emotion. Yeah. Does your do, do networks and agency your agency ever get mad at you because you're not on social media? They stop that, and everybody around me know. Like they they stop trying. I keep. I mean, I have a troll account. You know, that's fun. Oh, you're Kevin Durant. You got a burner account for it? I mean, I don't comment on shit. I'm not yeah, going yeah, yeah. <laughs> to go gonna look. I'm not going to fight you. I don't even look for me. I just like seeing, like, you know. Do you type your name in just to see what people are saying about you? I have before. That's a crazy, dark road to go down. It's, sometimes it's, delightful. Sometimes very yeah. nice. People are really. I don't know. I actually don't. I haven't seen things. Nothing that's made me go like, what? It's not good what for your mental that? health, though. Yeah, well, even just. My whole life's about me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't need more me <laughs> in my life. Yeah. Like every like uh, the calls and all the things and projects you're working on. Like I don't, I don't need more me. I don't need to like search me a lot. So when you make an announcement like the Django Zaro movie, you don't go online to see what people think about that. I didn't even make that announcement. I, I really don't even know how that got out. I've been doing that for like a year. I, I just really? don't say stuff. Yeah, that's been a thing that's been going on. Maybe even longer, like a year. I, I just don't, I also don't believe in announcing projects. People like to be like, you know, I'm working on this thing and then it disappears and you never hear about it. Like, you have to give room shit to fail and 
I've worked on a lot of shit that like nobody's ever seen. Oh my god, I've worked with <laughs> so many people. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but just I never announce. It's very, it's distracting. But what is the Django Django Zorro movie? That sounds it, weird as fuck. Yeah, it's weird. It, it's, with Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, yeah, it, it's fun to write. He's one of my favorite filmmakers, so it's been fun to be around him and like you know watch movies with him and talk mm -hmm. movies with him and like. You know, then he disappears and makes a movie, and <laughs> like it, it's, it's this graphic novel that's just Django and Zorro, mm -hmm. you know, together now. Like you know, it, it's a great story. I, I read it and then I wanted to do it, and then they uh, Sony wanted to adapt it, and it was just kind of good timing. And Quentin was a fan, and I was a fan, and it just worked. Do you feel the need to feel to feel famous? Not to be famous, to feel famous. What do you mean, like? Because you do do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So what if you're, you know, just on a plane somewhere and nobody's giving you any special treatment? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I uh, no, I I I don't feel a need to be famous. It, I, I I at restaurants it is good. I like it at restaurants, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just to walk in and not make a reservation. That's really nice. But otherwise, like, no, again, I don't want attention unless I'm like, hey, look at this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I don't feel the need. Like, I don't. I, I've always been like that. I, I really care about work and making stuff good, you know, and fame can be a part of that. Like, hopefully you make something good enough, enough people like it and they know you. But I, I never chase it in any way. You know, I'm terrible at being a famous person or fame ish or whatever the fuck I am. <laughs> like yeah. like I'm terrible at it. I again I don't want it. I don't seek it. TMZ be coming up to me like on the sidewalk and I just stare at him like you know I'm not gonna <laughs> like I'm not gonna engage. With that I, I, we, we, with that said, when you do something like home videos or sermon on the mount, is that your way of trying to establish a personal connection with the audience? Cause as popping as you are and all of the things you've done from sitcoms to movies, whatever else, you don't really have a connection with the audience, it seems like. Yeah, I uh, I, I think that I do, just not in the sense of, like, social media. I, I'm always trying to connect. I do care about a connection with the gotcha. audience. I, I, that's all I care about. Mm -hmm. You know, I want people to feel it and understand. I want people to understand it or question it or throw rocks at it or even just hate it and walk away and like let that spark something. I just want people to feel stuff. Uh, I, I I am, I'm always like exploring myself and exploring like things. And so that manifests itself as work and came out as home videos and, you know, was in the Carmichael show, <laughs> you know, it was in my stand up, then the films I'm writing. It's like, it's all in seek of a connection, in search of a connection. Like I, I'm seeking, uh, I'm seeking understanding. I'm, I, I am seeking being heard, mm -hmm. you know, and that's why I'm not on. Cause when I, when I say something or, or I make something, I, I want your attention. I really want your attention. I All want right. you to watch it. You know, not a lot of people, uh, watch the first one. Why well, you think I'm here? It's it yeah. you know, like, I think it's great. <laughs> I think that shit is fucking incredible. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, it's gorgeous. The music's good. <laughs> no, because a lot, like a lot, of, a lot of people, a lot of people will say. You, you hear people talk all the time. Gerard has a industry. Gerard has a, uh, industry connections. People in the industry fuck with Gerard. Oh yeah, but yeah people yeah. outside of the industry, the actual people don't really know. Who I Gerard also is. haven't made a lot. Like, I also don't do a lot of the things that go with being famous. I do shun press a, a lot yeah, of yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. I don't go to event. I don't go to parties unless my friends are there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like actual I friends. My friends have to be there. Yeah. And sometimes it's industry by circumstance of that, but like like I don't seek it, you know, and so I am playing a longer game. Mm -hmm. uh, like I, I want to have a body of work. I want to have a catalog of work. Like I'm chasing the Beatles. I'm really I think of myself as kind of a working kind of like a musical artist where it's just like I'm release I've released shit that are the levels of SoundCloud to you know, billboard, but I I just want to make shit, release it, and disappear. That's all I want to do. You're but, playing a long game. Yeah, so it's, it's a long. I'm doing fine. I mean, it's it's functioning, <laughs> but I, I just want. I don't know. I just want to make stuff that people care about. 
How did you feel when Rel got canceled? That should have happened. <laughs> wow, why? It wasn't functioning. Really? It wasn't working. You know what I mean? Like, and, and that should have, Rel's still, I mean, that's my brother. Mm -hmm. I love him. It, it wasn't functioning. It didn't function right. It, it didn't find that rhythm. You know what I mean? It didn't find the thing. And it was just like, I think it was a few ideas fighting each other and it, it didn't really find its footing. It was a lot of talented, incredible people involved. And like, if a thing's not functioning, you gotta let it go. But do networks give it a chance though? I mean, did he get a chance to find his rhythm? <laughs> He's gonna kill me for this. He got a chance. He had a great. It was a, good, it was a fall release. I, I, no complaints for me on the launch mm -hmm. of it, right? And like, I didn't write it, but I was there to like. I, I always find my role is like protecting. Like when my friends make stuff and I make things with my friends, I just want to protect it and whatever they want to do, I want to, you know, run block for that. Uh, and you know, so I, I tried to do my job there, but it just didn't click. It didn't connect. Did um did the passing of Kevin Barnett affect it in any way? Well, he died after. I mean, that affected us all in a, you know, kind of the obvious lingering way that it can affect it. Uh, that was after. That was, uh, I mean, you know, we got dark senses of humor. So, you know, yeah, we yeah. obviously like to tell Rel that his show killed Kevin. But, Jesus uh, Christ. But, like, but that's just us, though. I don't expect you do what you do with your friend group My and God. you are beholden to that. But, like, we can do, the, we can make those jokes. I hope you said that to him in person and not over text. I would probably be... both. I'm sure there's a, all types of trails of those types of jokes. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> No. That, would, that would be the show to kill someone. If you're going to die after a show, it's <laughs> goddamn, that was a it fucking wasn't roller coaster. that bad, man. I loved it. I, no, it was, no, I'm not saying the show. I'm saying yeah. it was a lot. When when ideas are fighting each other, like when there's a conflict of ideas, yeah. it, it's it's tumultuous. It's not, you know. Who do you listen to in those moments? Though? Like if I'm, if I'm real mm -hmm. and I want my show to work, or even with you with the Carl Michael show, and I want the Carl Michael show to work, but then you got all these executives telling me, well, it should be like this and it should be like that. Who does the creative listen to? Well, I mean, look, I can only speak for me. For me, for Carmichael's show, that was me. That show is me. Mm -hmm. And I, I am proud of most of the episodes of it. Uh, I get frustrated when people can't get past the pilot because the pilot was rocky. But I love that show, and that was me. And I made every decision, and I chose the mustard that was on the table, mm -hmm. like literally. Like I was, that was my thing every set. That I work with great people, but very, very specifically. Like I'm in like lighting and coloring and sound mixing. Like I'm, I'm with it. It's mine. Uh, and you have to want to take that type of ownership in order to make something that like I think is great. I think Carmichael Show is great, I and I had to like my mom likes work. the Carmichael Show. I was exhausted after that. That's a good. Your mom's like Carmichael Show. My like, mom, a big mom likes show. the Carmichael Show. She she was up here one weekend and it was Sunday, and she turned to it before I did. I'm like, wow. I know you watch the Carl Michael show. Oh, that's beautiful. She and she's a grown Jehovah's Witness. Like, oh, that's beautiful. You know I me, mean? she enjoyed the Carl Michael show. We gotta get your mom a man, man. We gotta get your mom out there. I know. We gotta take be your mom. My mom and your mom gotta do the Thelma and Louise just go on the road <laughs> type of shit. North Carolina, South yeah. Carolina. Now you, you spoke on home videos to your mom, and this was a headline. You said you hooked up with dudes before. Yeah. I didn't know if you were joking or not. Oh, good. <laughs> Good. I mean, it's like kind of, you know, it's obviously a line that you say in everyone. Went, I like, didn't even pay no attention. Like, it went over my head. Like, I was like, okay. Yeah. But then I saw the headline. I was like, huh? I missed that. Yeah, which should be the feeling for that. Like, it's like I'd say it. I said it. It was a conversation with my mom. I said it. And what else? I mean, <laughs> you it, know, it, like. It, it, what, was it true? And if it is, what made you want to use that forum for that? Uh, yeah. And I. One, I don't want that to feel exploitative. Like, home videos shouldn't feel that. And mm -hmm. it's like, we all playing and we all, like, naked in this thing. Then we're all naked in the thing. And, like, and it's my mom. And I, you know, was curious to see what she would think of that in that moment. And that was just such a pure moment of expression. And so it happened. It sounded like that was the first time she ever heard that. It though. was, yeah. Wow. Was time, yeah. So the whole family... Period. That was the first time they ever heard that. Uh, some, yeah. What was the reaction to the family, especially them hood ass uncles and your hood ass dad? <laughs> I mean, nobody said like, yeah. <laughs> like I, I mean, here, here's the thing. Like, 
to get hung up on anything that I say, like I'm always going to present things as honest as I can. And like sometimes, you know, there's a little bit of complexity to that that people can't accept. And I just accept that if you're just not going to accept that, you're not going to accept me, you're not going to accept my work. You know, it's I'm cool with that. I'm cool with letting that go. I, I, I don't think that's anything that like is in any way of disruption to life or to career to personal relationships that I care about yeah. at, at all. Like, yeah, it, was, it, it seems silly otherwise. You know what I loved about it? I love that you said that you put it out there and people really didn't give a fuck. And I was like, yes, yeah. cause I'm tired of the press conferences. I'm tired like, of, like, I'm tired like of again, <laughs> like be free, my nigga, like yes. say whatever the fuck. Maybe it's not that, maybe it's a conversation with your dad. Maybe it's a conversation with your mom. Maybe it's a conversation with your girl or your boyfriend or your whatever. Be free. Right, <laughs> Express right, right. it. Express what you're feeling. Who you like? Be you. Yeah. No, but <laughs> be you know, comfortable. You know it's gonna be pressure on you now to be an ally and be an advocate. And you know, I mean, I don't listen to any pressure to be anything other mm -hmm. than me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and I express my views as I have them, and I share them, and I try and contribute as much as I can when I can. And that's it. I, I don't look for like. I, I'm not going to use anything to try and springboard, like, you know, I won't use any status as any minority or any whatever, like, you know. Yeah, you don't lean on none of that. I've never no. seen you lean on any of that stuff, not even being black. like. No, I mean, it's inherent. Yeah. Look at me. Yeah. Dark as shit. <laughs> What what, the, what else do you want? What? Clear. I experience life as that look. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like I, I don't need to, like, I'm not going to abuse that. I actually, I really care. I don't, I'm not going to abuse it. I'm not going to use being black to springboard and whatever. Like, you know, if that's your route, then do it. But, you know, I, I know how beautiful black people are and their stories are and how complex that is. And I want to capture that. And I want to capture that even if it doesn't fit with the moment. I don't consider any of that. I just capture what I think is beautiful. Now you say you question everything. Have you have you always questioned your sexuality? Or you know exactly what it is. Like it's like a sampler platter. I like a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Uh, I feel pretty. Uh, no, I feel pretty confident in who I am. I, I never really, I really questioned it. I you know just went through life as I felt it. I still do. I, I, I a joke amongst my friends. I always say is that I, I play life by ear. Right, 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 <laughs> you know, right. and I I kind of live that way. It's like. I enjoy a certain amount of freedom. Is it something you're comfortable talking about? Or? Um, I mean, I also never, I don't really talk about who I'm dating ever. Never, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, in that sense, I'm not, I wouldn't dodge, I'm not, like, going to dodge anything, but, like, I don't, you know, just because it's the personal relationships and dynamics there that, like, I may not have the liberty to talk about sometimes, you know, so. I can't wait till a guy airs you out. Oh, that's funny. And just talk <laughs> No, I don't think anybody I can't would. wait to know who your hoes are. No, I, I don't think anybody would. Because, like, I don't know, it's pretty nice. Like, people come over. I got snacks. Uh, <laughs> pretty nice. Play GTA sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes watch The Breakfast Club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watch The Breakfast Club hookups. Uh, you know, give a bottle of water. They leave. That's it. <laughs> great, great. <laughs> Fun times. It's great. Like, what's there to air out? There's no, I don't lead anybody on. Yeah. Try to be very honest about my intention up front. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, you know, I, it's upset some people sometimes, but it's all the clarity is always better. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You got to be honest. So I, I'm just saying, like, I don't really engage that way. Of like, you would seem like, you seem like a very strange person to be in a relationship with. Cause, like, no, I'm going to take it. Cause, cause you have such a high emotional IQ, but you don't show any emotion, it just seems like to me, ever. <laughs> like, you're just always poker face Gerard all well, the time. Well, I'm very logical, right? So it's a lot of, a lot of times a thing happens, I react, uh, uh, it, you know, you calculate, you weigh things, you whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, that may not read as, I, I don't lead by emotion because I don't find that productive. I, 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 like, in art, you can, but you got to be in a space for that. But like otherwise, in like day to day, I don't I just react internally. I try and figure it out. I try and figure out if there's a problem, if there's a solution. And 
that's just who I am. That's just how I think, you know. So it's not that I don't experience things. It's that I, I, I really want to understand them before I'm dictated by any emotion. Yeah, even when I, even on the uh, Sermon on the Mountain, it's like you're standing in front of the hood and all your peoples are on the steps and the car pulls up and you're just standing there with a hoodie on like, who is that? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, Drod, I just I just saw Nipsey get gunned down in his own hood. Like, I, my, my mind would think totally different if I'm in my hood. But that's what's funny. I was nervous as fuck. I was very nervous in tell. that moment. But that's, <laughs> well, well, thank you. <laughs> I was very nervous. Like, I get, I'm, like, you know, there's a few drive-bys, you know, near my house growing up. So I, like, get kind of skittish about that. Yeah. Like, so, like, I freeze up. But again, it's emotional. Like, me going, like, oh, my God, like, any type of big reaction, what does that do? It doesn't help solve this thing. We're either going to have to run or, you know, prepare to get sh- I, I don't know. Like Jesus you gotta, Christ. But you, that, that's the weird pressure of a decision that you make kind of quickly. It's weird. You grow up, growing up in a hood allow, allows you to accept death, and that can either be a burden uh, or a benefit, but you have to make the decision to make that transition. I have yet to accept it. I have one friend who has accepted it totally and talks about it all the time, and that's Lil Duval. Yeah, and I have not. I, I I can't wrap my mind around the concept of that. I like. I wanted. I want to be here for as long as I possibly can. No, of course, can. I I do too. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, hey, healthy as shit, man. I'm yeah. trying to like yeah. be here forever. Yeah. Uh, but like at the same time, you just accept like accept that it is real, and you accept that it can happen, and it does happen, and you accept your life as is. And that's why that's why the freedom is important. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all you know because of death. Death is the marker that you know that we all march to, and you're just trying to have the best fucking time you can while you're here. Like, have a great time, like, and be free, and do not like be comfortable and happy and free. And that's so important. And like, people carry weight, and they it, accepting death is free. That's what I'm saying. It could be beneficial. Mm-hmm. It, it is freeing because now it's not. It doesn't mean you throw caution to the wind, you know, still respect yourself and try and protect yourself. But at the same time, it's not a burden. It's not an inhibiting factor. It's not something you even consider anymore. You're just out and just kind of ready, so ready for the world. So a Sermon on the Mount, is, is, is this what you're hoping that it gives people, just that ability to feel free? Man, if it could do that for people, oh, my God. I I would love that. That's what it gave me. I mm-hmm. hope it gives people that. Like, <laughs> I hope it at least sparks the desire to want it. Yeah. If it's small, like, whatever. And I'm not trying, like, I I don't believe art cures cancer. So I don't, it's not like I'm like, you know, and this will change you. I'm not going to give you the Tony Robbins speech or whatever. It's just, a again, a piece of emotion that I found interesting. But... If it can spark within you something that you know you have needed to do or say or a feeling you've needed to express, then I'm very happy you watch. Yeah, I feel like it gives, it, it shows that uncomfortable conversations don't have to be uncomfortable. No. That's what it shows. So not uncomfortable. Yeah, it's only as uncomfortable very as we great. make them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Things are always as uncomfortable and as awkward as you make it. Yeah. Yeah. My man Gerard Carmichael. When does Sermon on the Mount come out? Sunday. Sunday. HBO. Yeah. What time? I have no you idea. Have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but it just, it's on HBO Go and, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, and yeah. now and all of the platforms. Well, thank yeah. you for coming, man. I appreciate you, man. You know, you're one of my favorite I people, love you, man. man. I love you too. Man. I'll see you. Good to see you. My bro. man Gerard Carmichael. It's the Breakfast Club. <laughs>